Hey everyone, just coming to you with this public service announcement. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. So let me explain. First and foremost, it's free to do so. You don't got to come out of your pocket. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole bunch of other platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's why I got on it. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right. Peace. Peace, peace. We are back once again with Masterminds with Brother Shem L. I am your host, Brother Shem L, and I'm glad to be back, um, back with another episode. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm in a, I'm in a very good mood. Um, I want to send a special shout out to my my good brother, Big La La Mecca. Uh, we just finished up doing a photo shoot. Um, and I'm just working on some things right now. I got some things stewing in the pot, uh, working on some other projects as far as the media is concerned. I'm not going to let the bag, um, cut out the bag yet, but be tuned in. I will keep you posted. We'll still be doing this podcast, but um, there's some more opportunities that have come my way. And you know me, I'm, I'm about spreading the message in any, any and every way I can. Uh, as always, for those who want to reach out and communicate to me or get my product in my books, um, check out my blog, uh, some of my videos. Um, in addition to what you see on YouTube, you can go to my website, which is shemel.com which is s h e m hyphen e l.com so you can go to shemel.com and um check out the latest podcast recordings get my books my other products as well um you also have an opportunity um to get a free course lesson um i know that there are some um there are some of you who have been requesting the um, have been showing interest in that. So I appreciate the interest and we're just, I'm just trying to gauge some interest in terms of those who may be interested in me putting out a full fledged course, uh, probably start off with a beta version of it. Um, if you, if that's the case, let me know, give me your feedback on what's been, um, provided so far. Let me know if you want a course, um, if that's something that you would like for me to provide for you, in addition to the information that I'm already putting out via the podcast. Um, also, I am finishing up on my latest book. Um, I'm kind of like two thirds done, a little over two thirds done with the book. Uh, it's it's going to be dealing with um, inner work. I'll put it like that. Some real, um, it's, it's not like it's different. It's in line with what I've been putting out, but it's kind of different the way it's written and the way it's um, kind of laid out. I took a new approach with this because I'm definitely looking to expand my information to new markets. So I'm excited about this book. Um, it's coming out when it does come out, I will give you the title let you know where you can get it. Uh, more than likely, um, this book, like 99% more more than likely, it will be out on Amazon, which will be a first for me to actually really promote um, any of my work on that platform. So like I said, I'm expanding on new horizons, new platforms to get this information out. And as always, I appreciate everyone of you who've been riding with me from day one, um, those who've been tuning in, um, checking me out and genuinely and organically just supporting what I do. I appreciate you all. Um, with that also coming up this month, um, 
Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay, it is official. Um, it will go down the last Saturday of the month. And for some reason, I can't remember what Saturday that is. That might be the 31st, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's the 31st. Um, yeah, that's what it's going to be. Yep, the 31st. Check us out on in the morning time. I believe it will be 11 a.m. We will have the live interview with Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay none other than the legendary, um, esteemed, world-renowned scholar and author himself. Um, So be on the checkout for that. Um, Probably will, well, it's set to stream on YouTube, and then I will upload it as a podcast. But I'm excited about that as well. We're going to get into some very interesting topics. I'm, you're in for a treat, y'all. So I'm giving it to you as I as I can. I'm going to be doing more um, interviews as well. Um, give honors and, and a shout out to Sister Michelle Moore, who I just finished up wrapping up with the interview previously, um, just just a week or so ago, where she promoted her book. She talked about her book, Journey Back to Earth. Definitely go out and check out and support the sister, the original Titan.com. So I will start off. We are getting on the subject of thought. You know, um, in all of my uh, episodes, pretty much there's some um, aspect of thought that is spoken of. Um, but here we're going to actually um, center it around the whole theme of thought and as always I like to start off um, these episodes with a reading from the circle seven so I'm going to go to chapter one the creation and fall of man and I will not start from the beginning of the chapter but I'll start somewhere in the middle where it speaks about man being a thought okay so it goes as follows man is a thought of Allah All thoughts of Allah are infinite. They are not measured up by time. For things that are concerned with time begin and end. The thoughts of Allah are the everlasting of the past unto the never-ending days to come. And so is man, the spirit man. But man, like every other thought of Allah, was but a seed, a seed that held within itself the potencies of Allah, just as the seed of any plant of earth holds deep within itself the attributes of every part of that special plant. So spirit man, as seed of Allah, held deep within himself the attributes of every part of Allah. Now, seeds are perfect, yea, as perfect as the source from which they come, but they are not unfolded into life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother is. So man, the seed, must be deep planted in a soil that he might grow, unfold, as does the bud unfold to show the flower. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was full ordained to be the Lord of plane of soul and of the plane of things made manifest. So Allah, the husbandman of everything that is, threw forth this human seed into the soil of soul. It grew apace and man became a living soul. So I'll stop there. Okay. So we are speaking about thought and it's very important. I will also be reading um, portions of my book, um, Who is Elohim, where I speak on this aspect of thought and to give some context of what it is. Um, For example, we have to, to deal with thought, we also have to deal with creativity. Okay, 
And um, the reason why I spoke about creativity in Who is Elohim is because the answer to that question in the Morris questionnaire is Who is Elohim? It says the seven created spirits that created everything that ever was, is, and ever more to be. So to be creative means you have creativity. So the question is, what is creativity? Creativity is a phenomenon by which something new and valuable is created. The scope of interest in creativity includes a multitude of definitions and methods in various disciplines, right? And there are over 60 different definitions of the word creativity that exist in psychological literature. The etymological root of the word comes from the Latin word creatus, literally meaning to have grown. This literally means that creativity is a growth process. Creativity does not come about from a state of nothing. This growth process known as creativity starts from a seed, which is the thought of Allah, right? Which we just mentioned about in the um, first chapter of the circle seven. Okay. So, so it clearly describes how creativity is a product of thought, and Elohim is defined as the seven created spirits. Thus, Elohim created things through the power of thought. In fact, in the Circle 7, chapter 11, verses 20 to 23, it states, from Allah's own record book, we read the trial and law brief forth and stood seven spirits before his face. The Hebrews call these seven spirits Elohim, and these are they who, in their boundless power, created everything that is or was. These seven spirits of the Triune Allah moved on the face of boundless space, and seven ethers were, and every ether had its form of life. These forms of life were but the thought of Allah clothed in the substance of their ether planes. Now, what is thought? Thought is defined as an idea, plan, conception, or opinion produced by mental activity. The etymology of the word thought comes from the old English word, right? That actually stems from a word meaning to conceive of in the mind. This provides insight into the fact that a thought is a conception that is a birth and that thought grows by way of creativity so you have the conception aspect the birth and then you have the creativity aspect the growth thus the seed you know the thought being the seed and it has to grow and unfold right now the word thought is also believed to stem from the name thoth the greek pronunciation for the comedic name Jehuti or Tahuti. Now, who is Tahuti? Tahuti is known as the deity of wisdom in ancient Kemet. Tahuti sometimes is also pronounced as Jehuti, Tahuti, uh, Jehuti, Tetu, Tetu. And thought is also interestingly known, also can be spelled, it can be spelled T H O T H and also. T H O T, which is thought. And interestingly enough, thought is now a derogatory term used for um, a promiscuous woman. But that, before that usage, it was used to be associated with the ancient deity of wisdom in ancient Kemet. So, Tahuti is also known by many other names and titles. So, the Greeks associated Tahuti with their deity Hermes due to his similar attributes and functions so one of Tahuti's titles is three times great right which is translated into the Greek um, Tris uh, Magistos as Hermes Tris Magistus okay so when you hear that and that's where you get the hermetic teachings from when they talk about the hermetic disciplines and um also in relationship to the Kabbalion, right? So 
The sacred wisdom of Tehuti is inscribed in seven axioms found in a book known as the Kabbalion. So the first axiom within the sacred wisdom of Tehuti simply states, all is mental. And this is confirmed in the first chapter of the Circle 7, that all is mental. Thought is the cause of it all. In fact, the Circle 7 speaks of thought as being one of the names by which Allah is identified. So if you were to go to chapter 10, verses 18 and 19, it states, man names the part of Allah he sees, and this to him is all of Allah. And every nation sees a part of Allah, and every nation has a name for Allah. You Brahmins call him Parabram. In Egypt, he is Thoth, and Zeus is his name in Greece. Jehovah is his Hebrew name, but everywhere he is the causeless cause, the rootless root from which all things have grown. Now make note that he is identified as the rootless root from which all things have grown. This confirms that creation is a growth process. Okay? So I just want to put that in context. So... In the adept teachings, um, many adepts know about this fact, and I've mentioned this in previous episodes, that eternal thought is one. In essence, it is two, intelligence and force. And when they breathe, a child is born. This child is love, right? And we spoke about in an earlier um in an earlier episode about the triune in the episode that speaks about the Holy Trinity explained, right? So this concept of intelligent force and love or wisdom, will and love, right? That's the triune is the metaphysical um, principles And then, which became um, later on identified in exoteric explanations as um, father, mother, son. And then, when it got into Christianity, it became father, son, and Holy Ghost. Okay? Which is why there's such conflict in this. Uh, Interestingly enough, and I won't dwell too far into it but um, someone responded um, to my previous my previous uh, episode on the Holy Trinity and went into this long diatribe about um, the metaphysical concept or interpretation of the Holy Trinity being false and how there really is no Trinity. It's a duality with God and, and, and just basically missing the whole point. But I don't expect everyone to get it if they don't if they're not able to view things from a metaphysical or esoteric lens. So I don't I don't even you know I don't there's no even need to go back and forth with that. But Again, my point of it all is simply this, is that when we deal with these teachings, we have to uh, recognize the power of thought, you know, and that's what I really want to get into. And we're really going to dive deep into that um, aspect of thought, you know, so think about it like this. Okay, so. If you had a person that had an affliction, right? So let's say they had cerebral palsy or some something, um, and they actually had, you know, a lack of physical control, right? Or a person who was not as developed. Um, some people, what they call would be LD, learning disabilities and all things of that nature, right? Um, one person may be looked upon as being pitied 
and the other person may be looked upon as being um, despised. You know, uh, oh, well, one person, oh, well, they have this affliction. And the other person, oh, they're just lazy. Right? They're not putting, they're not putting any effort. You know, they're not asserting themselves. This similar value, value can be placed upon emotional and mental discipline. Okay. So there are those who may have an affliction with their spiritual development and some who are just, they just lack the discipline and they just don't want to put in the effort to develop themselves. So thought, the power of thought, that thought must be developed. Like to go back to chapter one, okay, which is very important. It says that without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength and thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. Thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. So thought is not, we get thousands of thoughts coming through our head in a day. Thousands, not hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, actually, to be honest. So with all these thoughts, the mind has to be developed in a way where it can harness that energy. Because if not, your mind will run wild. If you don't control your mind, someone will. Thus, this is the term masterminds, to master your mind. Okay? So, they, they are process similar um, to establish in the brain must be built into the mind by thought. Meaning, if you're looking at it as kind of like a training program, proceeding step by step, it's kind of like the learning process of a small child. That's why they use the term into um, in the Bible about come ye like children into the kingdom of heaven because you have to be humble and just learn this into the spiritual realm just like a child because you're a child in that world. You may be a full-grown adult in the physical matrix, but when it comes to the spiritual world, you are as a child. So you literally must go through a learning process like a child, right? Noble Drew Ali said, learn to love instead of hate. He wasn't saying that to children. He was saying that to grown people. So that's something to think about. Now, thought can be your, your greatest energy. The mind can be your greatest ally or your greatest enemy. Okay? So, when we think about a lot of these great individuals in history right who built empires okay they all had visions they all were able to manifest it all started with a thought that eventually had grown and came into fruition okay so miracles can be accomplished by thought energy you there's no limit to what can be done from the energy of thought. Because if you understand that thought is actually infinite, it's eternal, it never dissipates. It's just you may not, you're not able to actually access it at its frequency. Okay? And there's an excellent, um, I want to shout the brother out, Billy Carson an excellent um, lecture he gave in reference to that. And he was actually using science. You know, he didn't even go into scriptures, but he he's a metaphysician. And he's actually going into the science of thought energy waves that that scientists have actually discovered about this, of thought being eternal, infinite. OK, so no one would deny that thought is powerful. Right? You can inject a powerful thought into someone. You can push it. You can heal yourself with thinking. You can make yourself sick by thinking. And that's why group think is very dangerous. Group think is very dangerous. It can be used if properly used. It can it can help elevate people, 
but a lot of times, especially through mass media, it is very dangerous groupthink to massively control how you think because you actually will manifest things that you put in. And a lot of stuff that's put in through the media, and we're going to be honest about it, is negative. Thus, you get negative results. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. That's in the Bible, right? So if you're a student and trying to learn to master the mind, many will become confused when they try to use thought energy and obtain and fail to obtain their objective, right? So, for example, they'll, they can be told, you know, just focus on your success, visualize, visualize yourself being successful and, you know, or raise yourself to God consciousness, Christ consciousness, and you'd be happy in peace. Like, these are all true, but for the average person, they're the equivalent of somebody saying, um, pick up um, that guitar and go ahead and uh, play play like um, Jimi Hendrix, something like that. You know what I'm saying? It would be the equivalent of that. It'd be like, well, what are you talking about? You got the fingers, right? There's a guitar. Pick it up and play like Jimi Hendrix. Play exactly like Jimi Hendrix. Like, no, no, I can't play like him, right? <laughs> but technically, you can, in, con- in conceptually wise, because you have the same physical ability. But there's something unique. That there's a process to which you can tap into that to have that level of skill. It takes it's a process. So there you have to go through a process, the same thing with the mind. Now, in order to use this power of thought, it's necessary to start from the beginning and learn how the mind works, how the brain works. In almost the same way that a child learns how to use their muscles. Right, We see a little baby and they're trying to grab something and trying to put their foot, learning how to walk. They're getting to know how their body works. You also have to learn how your mind works. We're not really taught that. Now, we're taught information, but we're not taught the processes of how to control and develop the mind. It's already assumed that while learning, you're developing your mind instead of being. You, do, there's never been a class. I haven't known of any class yet from K to 12 where there's a, a, a subject course just on the mind. It doesn't exist. You get that when you're grown folks and you see these infomercials like, oh, you want to learn how to control your mind and oh, learn mind power. Like that's not taught in school. Why? There's a reason behind that. (laughs) We can get behind that. But um, so you must constantly, you must consciously, willfully train yourself in the more difficult task because it requires will, right? Will, that's the force. Not the power, but the force. Okay? And there's various techniques. Like, um... And I'm starting to do this now. Uh, Here's a technique, a brain technique to rewire your brain, help open up certain channels of your brain. If you're right-handed, start brushing your teeth with your left hand. If you're naturally used to brushing your teeth with your right hand, start brushing your teeth with your left hand and do it all the time. That's just one, one simple task. It might seem real silly. Do that. Start doing that. Do that for 30 days. And you'll start to see how your brain works. Right? Another aspect which has helped me is learn a language which has you write in the opposite way. What I mean by that? I learned Arabic, how to write Arabic when I was young. And the thing about learning how to write Arabic is you write from right to left, not left to right. And you read from right to left, not left to right. So it actually it actually works another part of your brain in that process. Actually, being multilingual does that. 
So there's multiple ways to get into that. And we're going to get more into the various techniques that you can do for the development of your thought power and your mind in the next half. So the techniques, the exercises that you can use in the development of your thought power are observation, concentration, meditation, and visualization. And what I like to do is um, dive into each one of those. Um, and then also, while I do that, give some references on some various texts, old um, scriptural texts. So you start off by training the power of observation, okay? Now, this method was actually used and recommended by Buddha as an initial step in training the mind. So the story is, is that he would walk, Buddha would walk among his students and while speaking to them, he would stop and ask, where was I standing when I uttered this word, whatever that word was? Or another time he would pause in his teaching and say, what movements did I make with my right hand when I spoke of this? Right? So he was teaching his students to be attentive, to pay attention and training them in the powers of observation. Some of the greatest students of master teachers, um, they are known to practically mimic them. Not just sound, not just say what they say, but say it how they said it and do and emulate the same mannerisms because they're not just paying attention to the words, the message, but they're paying attention to the very um, nuances that occur at the moment in which that teacher was teaching. Okay. Now, there are three exercises um, that you can use, and they're, they're simple. Um, they're so simple, you, you may think it may be useless, but don't dismiss it, okay? Uh, because your mind is very powerful, and again, whatever you plant into the mind uh, will grow. Plant and you fertilize it, it will grow. It doesn't matter if it's um, we become what we think about, basically. The saying is, we become what we think about. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. So, what you plant in the mind, it doesn't matter what you think. You can plant a thought seed of poison, or you can plant a point, uh, pl uh, a thought seed of a healing herb. It will grow what you plant in it. <laughs> okay? So you got to learn to take... They're designed to help you learn to take hold of the thought. Basically, to grab that thought and keep it in place. So it doesn't... You don't lose it. Okay? So, number one. If you go into a room for your very first time, close your eyes for a moment. When you walk in a room... Okay, and just recall to yourself when you walk into the room how many objects in the room that you can identify table, chairs, pictures, um, desk, bookshelves, whatever. Do this whenever you go into a new place. Okay, go in there, walk in there, close your eyes, and just observe create go into the mental picture of what you just observed okay 
That's one exercise. Two, when going up or down a series of steps, recall how many steps you took. Were in the was in those step, stairs, right? Number three. Now this is to be done during the evening time. Okay. At the end of the day, before you go to bed, recall what you did when you first left the house. If you didn't, if you didn't leave the house, what did you eat for breakfast? What did you see? What did you do? Okay. Recall about three or four minutes of this. Okay. The next day, uh, recall what you did after lunch, right? And so on and so forth. So, you, so you're recalling various time spots, time slots within your day. Okay. Do this for about three weeks. Okay. So what will happen is you'll begin to grasp the purpose and begin to design other similar exercises to sharpen your brain. As you notice, um, you know, they're not all the same. And this is to prepare you into a higher area of, of developing your mind, a training for your mind. But again, no, these may, simple, may be simple. Don't dismiss them. OK, they will be your preliminary training for future development of thought and mind control. OK, so the next one would be, of course, after observation is concentration. Okay. Now, some would, a lot of people would say when we talk about these concentration and observation, like, I don't, I don't need to um, learn these things. You know, I, I know how to concentrate. I can pay attention and all this other stuff. Uh, my job requires me to concentrate. So I concentrate on the job. But what you're doing is you're, those things, if you do a job, let's say you do a job and you're a numbers person, you have to work numbers, so you have to concentrate on the numbers. Your brain will only default in that area for it to, to be be attentive and concentrating on. And then, naturally, because we like to resort to relief of stress, we will not pay attention on the simplest things. That's why it's been said that um, some of the most educated people uh, could be some of the most clumsy people or some of the most like not unintelligent do some of the most unintelligent things you'd be like oh man he's a doctor he's a surgeon like why he do that stupid stuff right because they're only they're only putting their full energy their full mental energy into the job at hand during that time that is required for them to succeed, which is part of their job, so they can survive. <laughs> they could, they could, they could be paid to provide what it is they need. They may have a whole another life. Once they stop doing whatever they're doing, they may be clumsy. It may be a, a what is it like the Pink Panther? Anybody know about the Pink Panther? The person, the detective, who was always bumping into stuff or whatever. Just was very awkward. They could be that, but at their job, they're like Rain Man, like, you know, just halfway autistic. Just when it comes to certain things, oh, they, they know their numbers. They know how to do this. They're very technical. But outside of that, they, they're a bumbling fool. So you have to be able to um, exercise that at will, the powers of concentration. And there's certain exercises you can do for that, okay? And um, before I get into that, this is something, this is a very key lesson that um, hit me very deeply. And I, and I communicate this with others. I've communicated with others. There is a difference between an emotionally motivated thought and a thoughtfully motivated emotion. Okay. A lot of people you know, just don't think or their thoughts rather are motivated by emotions, not reason. Okay. That's why you'll see people do certain things. You'd be like, why did they just do that? That didn't even make sense. The thought came to them, but it's motivated and it's, it's, um, powered by 
the emotion, the emotional body, instead of the mental body, which should be the one in control. A thoughtfully motivated emotion is when the mind is in control. Okay, so just keep in, keep in mindset of that. Okay, so here's some exercises with concentration. For one, um, multiply two numbers of two digits each in your head, right? Such as, um, you could say, well, 10 times 50, but that's really easy because that's just a matter of adding zeros. Do it with a number such as um, 33 times 21, right? Do it in your head. Do this until you, you're sure that the number is accurate. The answer is accurate. Once you do this, do the same thing with three digits each. And do it once a day with different numbers. Don't use the same numbers. Okay? That's one exercise. Because that's going to force you to concentrate. Because you can't just come up with the numbers off top. Eventually, you'll be able to tap into your your mind to the point where, and there's gurus and adepts who have done this, where they can, you can just throw numbers at them and they get, they'll get the answer, just that. And that's a certain level of mind power that they have. The second one is memorize four lines of a poem, or you know, a short paragraph. Memorize four lines. Let's say four lines of a poem or a song. Do this once a day. Okay? Um, You shouldn't have to agonize over it. You just want to um, be able to hold the thought again. The third exercise is when you pass people on the street or anywhere else, you see you can see the person for a short time then have them pass out of your field of vision right let's say several people you take one person look closely into the face then look away and for one minute hold the image of that person's face in your mind's eye study the expression and seek to put yourself into how that person could be thinking when they had that expression. Okay. That's a powerful one right there. Um, that's something that I've done in the past. Um, so again, this is when you get to that level, you, you're developing the open end of the road for higher, um, practices, right? So this can be very rewarding for you if you do this. Uh, and then don't, you know, don't just be all up in their face. Like I said, just take a quick look and then hold it, the image in the mind's eye. Okay. So what happens is you be able to attune to people. You'll be able to look at their face and capture their emotions. When I say capture their emotions, meaning you'll be able to know the emotions that they have at any time based on looking at their face. I've been able to do that. Right, you know, there's, there, there's that song, that old song. Um, not too many people know it, but it's a song called "It's Written All Over Your Face." You ain't, you don't have to say a word. That's which is an old saying as well. That's very true. If you're able to read faces. Now, the purpose of it, of course, is not to be you know all up in people's business, but particularly for your loved ones, if they're in distress you'll be able to pick it up just by their facial expressions because you'll know how to associate connect the emotion the soul to the to the facial expression the continents as you would have and you know they may not they could be a prideful person and not want to say what it is on their mind but you can still be able to offer um consult console them and you know be of help to them without having to pry in and, you know, say, well, tell me what's wrong. What it? You know, you don't have to do it. If you know something's wrong, just a system like, okay. And you ain't got to say, yeah, I could tell. I could tell something's wrong with you. Because that may even make, make the person feel more bad, you know. But those are some of the things you'll learn as you develop this.
So this conscious application to this puts the brain to work in such a way where you you can observe it working. Okay, you're observing the brain at work and you come to the apprehension of thought. So thought is an activity of the mind. Thought is an activity of the mind. And the mind can function separate from the brain. There's a misconception that the brain, for many people, more people than, than you would think, that the mind and the brain are the same thing. And that somehow the mind is located in the brain or in the same area as the brain. You have a mental body that far surpasses, expands beyond the area where the brain sits in the skull. Right? So we say in my mind, you point up to your head, but your mind really, your mind is beyond that. It expands beyond that. And we have to be aware of that, the mental body. Also, the mental body that can, that can actually connect to, it not actually can, but it does connect to the mental reservoir. There was a mental reservoir that we all tapped into. Thus, nothing is new under the sun, right? In reality, nothing is new under the sun. You think you're doing something new. You're not really doing something new. You may have a unique expression of it because of how you are. But what you're doing, what you're coming up with, is not really a new thing per se. It's not a new thought per se. Thought is eternal. Always was, is, and evermore will be. So, it is possible to think, to have your mind operate apart from the brain. And certain people have trained themselves to do this. Now, this may sound confusing but when you develop about being a mastermind mastering the mind you will be able to detect the, the separation and distinction between mind and brain and this is not to discredit the brain the brain is very important it's an instrument of the mind but when you operate from mind as opposed from brain then you get into a whole new level and when you operate from spirit <laughs> above, which is beyond mind and brain then you're really there okay our ultimate goal is to function thought from, sp from the realm of spirit where it is no effort it just is that's where you want to get to there is no planning in spirit it is it really is okay that's why I said spirit in chapter one uh, of the circle seven, spirit man cannot die. Point blank, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can really get on into that. Like that's that's really a deep um, process to really go into. Um, but I want to get into the other things as well. Meditation. Okay. Now Meditation is very important, and I want to address meditation. Um, you know, as, as you know, I did a whole um, episode on meditation, and we'll probably revisit um, these aspects as well, but I definitely wanted to actually be able to speak in terms of meditation right now to help us really get into developing ourselves because it's very important the um, aspect of of the meditation right getting in with the higher self and there's various types of meditation of course that we know of but what I wanted to do was be able to address the meditation to actually be able to address it from a standpoint pertaining to spirit, a standpoint of being able to actually really truly develop yourself. Um, 
and this is important. I just want to get into it, and it may take me a moment because what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to go ahead and speak on um, the aspect of different meditation techniques. So you'll probably hear me go back. Yeah, matter of fact, what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to read from the my book, Who is Elohim? Okay? So, as I mentioned before um, about Buddha, the first um, training in technique and training the mind was observation. Now, of course, the title Buddha, with the title Buddha, light is associated with the spirit in the sense of that a spiritual lifestyle, which includes meditation, leads to one's enlightenment. Now, in Islam, the equivalent of samadhi meditation would be something called murakaba, right? Now, let's address this. What is murakaba? Murakaba is the Sufi word for meditation. In Arabic, it literally means to observe. So there's associating observation with meditation in Arabic. It implies that with meditation, one observes their higher self and acquires knowledge of it. While prayer is the art of talking and not listening, meditation is the art of listening and not talking. Through meditation, a person becomes one with the divine, with the omnipotent. The benefit of meditation is described in the circle seven, specifically chapter 35, verses 18 to 20, which state, if we lift up our eyes to the heavens, his glory shineth forth. If we cast them down on the earth, it is full of his goodness. The hills and the valleys rejoice and sing. Fields, rivers, and woods resound his praise. But thee he have distinguished with peculiar favor and exalted thy station above all creatures. But thee he have imbued thee with reason to maintain thy dominion. He hath fitted thee with language to improve thy society, and exalted thy mind with the powers of meditation to contemplate and adore his imitable perfections. Okay? So, that being said, let's get into the aspect of meditation. Now, if you want to use thought to its full potential, you must learn to think consciously apart from the brain. This is where meditation comes in. Okay? So, I won't even get into the exercises of meditation. What I will say is refer back to my uh, episode on Moorish meditations. Go back there and refer to that. Um, And again, there's so many different meditations, but I just want you to go back to that. Now, so there are definitely training exercises, right, that you can use in reference to this, okay? So what they do is they parallel in the area of the mind, the simple movements of the infant who's exploring the world for the first time. So just as a child explores the world for the first time, you explore the spiritual world for the for the first time. So you're finding new things and learning, okay? In the mental world and in the spiritual world, right? So just like a child, you're going to make errors, okay? So just a child will stumble and fall like they're walking. You're going to you're going to make errors. You're not going to get everything right when you're first getting involved in these practices. But they tell you practice makes perfect. Okay? So these are things that you have to keep in the in the mindset. Okay? So there's one thing that I want to reveal to you 
It's a little known fact, but it's a very significant fact. The mind is the royal part of us. Okay? It's a royal, noble part of us by nature. Okay? So the power it can will to be the ruler of your life, or as that says in the um, Circle 7, first chapter, the Lord of the Plane of Manifest, it can do that and control all events around you. You literally can control your world with your mind if you can control your mind. Right? The master of self. Yet, most of it, use it as a servant. Right? So we try to make the mind the slave of our emotions when the mind is supposed to be the master of your emotions we got it backwards we have to make the emotions and desires subservient to the mind okay so that's very important to keep in mind when we do it that because the emotions will get you in trouble those desires can get you in trouble depending on what they are, right? So, a lot of times we talk about there's a distinction between physical, emotional, and mental. In actuality, they are all vibrations. They're the same thing. It's energy just vibrating in different frequencies. It's like water, as I mentioned, solid, liquid, gas, right? The ethers exist within the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, realms the same ether of substance is just vibrating at various rates it's all you okay so keep that in mind though the the true you in the essence is the spirit always keep that that is that which will not pass away it cannot cannot change or pass away Right. So, so that I will go into the visualization aspects. Okay. Now the visualization is important because we have to know exactly what visualization is. And visualization also can be associated with the word imagination. So some people will say that imagination and visualization are two different things, but for this purpose, I will keep them the same. I will surmise them in the same. And um, there are various teachers who came along the way and spoke on that, such as um, Neville Goddard. Um, You can look up his work. Even um, he was taught by a man named um, Abdullah, who was an Ethiopian. uh, uh, He was an Ethiopian master teacher from uh, master teacher from Ethiopia. Um, and he taught the Kabbalah, a um, very masterful teacher uh, who taught that man as well as, uh, I believe, Joseph Murphy he taught. And also um, the man who uh, also studied the work of Neville Goddard and referenced him, who also was a master in his own right, was uh, Reverend Ike. Though a lot of people you know, have some things to say about him. When you study his teaching, the the message, the lessons that he taught are powerful. You know, people may not like his approach, but if you can get past that, you know, you know, your likes or dislikes of how he taught, the message is on point. Um, So I just want to get into that real quick. What I will say here is basically to surmise real quick. There has to be an emotional intensity connected with the visualization, okay? You have to feel it when you visualize it. It's not just an aspect of seeing it. You have to be able to um, be able to feel it, smell it, live in the end. It has to be not only the visualization of the goal, but also how you're feeling and how the experience is visually while you're there. 
and uh, I'll probably will do a whole demonstration on that at a later time. But until next time, I thank you all for tuning in and we will talk on another day. Until then, peace and love. <laughs>